In this video, I'm going to explain the light independent reaction of photosynthesis, aka the Calvin cycle. Now, I've also done a very long video on the light dependent reaction. It was quite a while ago, but do check that out if you haven't seen it already. But this, yeah, this is happening in the stroma. Let's just start with the basics. This is the second stage of photosynthesis. Now, this doesn't directly require light. I couldn't get my words out then. It doesn't directly require light, but it does require ATP and NADPH. So it does require the products of the light dependent reaction. So indirectly, it is relying on light, okay? But we're in the stroma, it's the second stage of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Let's start here. So we need carbon dioxide for this reaction and carbon dioxide is gonna diffuse into the stroma of a chloroplast from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. When it diffuses into the stroma, it's gonna combine with ruby P. And that combination or that reaction between ruby P and CO2 is called carbon fixation. You can also say that ruby P is carboxylated or simply ruby P reacts with CO2. This requires the enzyme Rubisco, and it is important you should know the name of that enzyme. So Rubisco catalyzes the carboxylation of Ruby P. Now, when they join together, this gives us a six carbon compound, but it is very reactive and unstable, so it immediately splits into two molecules of GP. Now, GP stands for glycerate 3-phosphate, but you can abbreviate it in your exam if you are AQA two molecules of GP, each with three carbons. Then we've got probably the most important bit or the bit that comes up most on the exam. Those two molecules of GP are reduced into two molecules of triose phosphate, which we must name, hence why I've not shortened that to TP. Now, this is the important stage because it requires the products of the light dependent reaction. So ATP that we made in the light dependent reaction, that provides the energy. So we're gonna hydrolyze ATP into ADP and PI, that releases energy and that energy is used in that conversion. Why do we need the NADPH? Well, NADPH provides the hydrogen here. So NADPH is oxidized, it's going to lose hydrogen, um, and the GPs are going to be reduced to triose phosphate because they gain hydrogen. So it's really important we remember this is reduction, and we say that the two molecules of GP are reduced into two triose phosphates using NADPH, or reduced NADP. Now, with three turns of this cycle, we're gonna make six triose phosphates, right? Two per turn. Now, when we've got six triose phosphate, one of those triose phosphates will go towards making a glucose. But remember, glucose does contain six carbons. Triose phosphate does only have three. So in total, you do need two triose phosphates to make one glucose, which is why you would need six of these cycles to take place, you'd need to make 12 triose phosphates to allow two triose phosphates to form a glucose. Because the rest of those triose phosphates go towards regenerating Ruby P. So every three cycles, six triose phosphates, one goes towards making a glucose and five go towards regenerating Ruby P. Or you can think of it of Think of it as with six cycles, you'd make 12 triose phosphates, two can go towards making a glucose, and the other 10 can go towards regenerating Ruby P. Now, you don't have to remember these numbers, but they could give you information in the exam about carbon numbers, for example, and ask you to work that kind of thing out. So just remember that glucose has six carbons, each triose phosphate has three carbons, and Ruby P has five carbons, obviously GP is also three carbons. Now, regenerating Ruby P also requires ATP, as well as this step here. And anything else we can say, this glucose, obviously then plants can use that glucose to make sucrose, 
for transporting the phloem, they can use it to store starch, they can use it to make lipids, they can use it to make cellulose, they can even use it to make proteins. So this is just the starting point for the building of all of those other organic molecules. And that's it. The light independent reaction explained. I think this is a really nice question to come up as a five or six marker. It's one of those questions that you can just learn as a story. You may also get shorter answer questions. They do tend to focus on the importance of ATP and NADPH in the light independent reaction.